Hello everyone, are you ready for more uh, video book reviews? Because I'm afraid I've got some for you, I'll never get a chance to write them. So I've got three books for you today and they do have a um, link somewhat thematically. And I do apologise for this interrogation lamp, but daylight has faded and I'll never get a chance to record uh, for the rest of this week if I don't do it now. So the first book I want to draw your attention to is by Norwegian writer Gunnar Stalesen. It's the latest instalment in his Vargveum series, the private investigator Vargveum, and it's called Wolves in the Dark. Vargveum is a phenomenon in Norway. He has a statue and a place in a hotel dedicated to him in his hometown of Bergen. So he's very well known and he has started to be translated into English thanks to Orenda books. Um, this is a rather grim uh, book because Varg is actually being accused of being part of a paedophile ring and they have found child pornography on his computer. Now he thinks it's a setup, but he cannot prove it because for the past few years since the death of his um, uh, lover Karin, he has been a bit through hell and back. He has um, drunk a lot, passed out a lot, and he cannot really remember what he did uh, during that period, the cases that he was involved in. He suspects that it might have something to do with one of those cases, but he has to prove it. So he runs away from police custody very foolish thing to do and he tries to prove his innocence and in the process of course shows us this underbelly of um, underworld of Norwegian life um, including the child refugee centres so a, a very um, dark book um, and not at all what one might expect of Norway Again, a book that one might not at all expect of Switzerland is the book entitled Swiss Traffic by Mary Anna Barbie. Mary Anna Barbie is actually an American author, <coughs> excuse me, who has been living, however, for a very long time in Switzerland. And she's written this in French and it has not yet been translated into English. Um, she is actually a journalist and she has written non-fiction as well on the subject of human trafficking, particularly the trafficking of women So uh, in Switzerland. So she's very knowledgeable on this subject. This, however, is a novel, a crime novel, uh, in which um, a journalist, Delphine, who's actually a sort of Lonely Hearts columnist, um, finds a dead man in a swimming pool somewhere in the Swiss Alps and becomes involved in investigating his death simply out of curiosity. Um, it is not incredibly well written, I'll be honest with you. I found it slightly overlong and repetitive and perhaps a bit too detailed in, in certain uh, respects. Um, but the story is a very interesting one. Two years ago, uh, no, in 2013, 2014, I met um, the author at the Livre sur les Quais book festival in Marche in Switzerland. And a lot of fellow authors were reading this book. And I think it is because of the shock value of it, of um, all the hidden uh, things that the Swiss like to think themselves uh, immune to and she uncovers it all and I liked a few of the observations let me just read a few quick quotes here from the book um, she compares for instance one of the characters compares French politics with Swiss politics and says look at the French they're completely different there's left there's right they fight like cats and dogs the word compromise is an insult there while here it's a political tool and sometimes even a question of survival it might not be exciting, but it works. And then the other um, uh, quote that I liked is, the Swiss always say that if everybody were to stay at home, the cows would be well looked after. In other words, mind your own business. 
And I think that that's a very astute way of describing Swiss culture. Um, the final book is also written by an outsider looking in. Um, it is the book The Translator by Leila Abulela. And it is about Samar, a young Sudanese widow, a Muslim, who works as a translator from Arabic uh, at, a university, at the University of Aberdeen and falls in love slowly, gradually with um, a Scottish lecturer, Ray. Um, it's not a straightforward love story because she somewhat naively expects Ray with his great understanding and, and love for Arabic culture to uh, convert to Islam in order to be able to marry her. And when that doesn't quite pan out the way she expects, she tries to find refuge with her family in Sudan, but discovers that she's an outsider there as well. Um, it's not just the, the cold, grey, Scottish winters, but also her the hot, colourful um, Sudanese uh, landscape that have become somewhat foreign to her, or else both have become home to her. And just a quick quote from, from there. In her office, where she does her translations at the university, she sometimes takes out her shawl, which she keeps in the drawer as a prayer mat. It had seemed strange for her when she first came to live here, all that privacy that surrounded praying. She was used to seeing people pray on pavements and on grass. She was used to praying in the middle of parties, in places where others chatted, slept or read. But she was aware now, after having lived in the city for many years, she could understand how surprised people would be were they to turn the corner of a building and find someone with their forehead, nose and palms touching the ground. She wondered how Ray would feel if he ever saw her praying. Would he feel alienated from her, the difference between them accentuated, underlined? Or would it seem to him something that was within reach, something that he himself would want to do? I have to admit I was not terribly impressed with the style. I thought that at times it veered towards the pedestrian and at other times towards the overwrought. But I do like books about uh, the meeting of cultures and bear in mind that this one was written before 9-11 but books like this are even more important today. So these are my three books. I hope you have a good reading week and that you have had a good reading week and I look forward to catching up with you soon.